Hello, I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. I'm so glad you joined me today. I'm going to be teaching on fear versus faith. And I tell you, in this day and hour, we need to have our faith built up. And I believe we can build your faith up so that your fear is diminished. While I was uh, preparing for this message, I felt impressed in my spirit that there's going to be people, particularly maybe one person, that needs healing in their bodies. And I want to sing this song, He's a Healing Jesus. And if you're that person, and I don't know where it is in your body that you maybe need a touch from God, as I minister this song, I just ask you to receive that healing touch. He's a healing Jesus.
Every marriage has its good times and its bad. We all know it isn't easy, but what do you do to make your marriage work? In this single CD teaching, you'll get practical guidance from Jeannie Caldwell on how to make your marriage work. Based on scripture and her own experience, Jeannie gives real love and wisdom on the calling of marriage. For real wisdom on marriage, you need to order this CD teaching for just $5 plus shipping. Call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for offer number JC003. Or log on to vtntv.com and click on shop to order online. Well, I just believe God touched you today. Whatever it is that you had need of, I believe that you received it in the name of Jesus. I know when the Lord tells me something like that, there's someone that needs to be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We're talking about fear versus faith. You know, they're complete opposites. You can't have faith and you can't have fear in the heart. It's got to be one or the other. Fear is Satan's number one weapon against a Christians because it is the opposite of faith. You can't have faith and you can't have fear at the same time. Through the Word, now you can banish all fear from your life. Wow, isn't that a wonderful thought? You know, I remember many years ago, I was just all bound up with fear. Came as a child, you know, when people used to, the, your parents and friends and all that, we used to, uh, we didn't have television like you do, you have now. Now, we had television, but not the programs that are on television. And I remember we used to scare one another, you know, and do things to just frighten someone. And so it made me afraid. I had, a, I really believe I had a spirit of fear on me from those things. And, and so it had to be cast off of me because I absolutely was fearful. Not, not to a, a, a degree that I couldn't motivate or move, but yet it was there. And when I realized it, actually, I just said to myself, now fear, you get off of me in Jesus' name. I will not have you. I recognize you, and I tell you to leave me now in Jesus' name. I want you to know it left. It left, and I have not been fearful since. Now, that doesn't mean to say that fear won't try to come to a degree, just to a degree, but I, I recognize it, and I just say, leave me now. I'm not going to have you, and I don't have it like I used to have it. Praise be to God. Now, the Greek word for fear is phobos, P-H-O-B-O-S, phobos. It's the word uh, from the English language where we get phobia, P-H-O-B-I-A. Talk about people having a phobia. Fear is a phobia which becomes more intense as you think on it or feed on it. If you notice, if you think on something, you can get more afraid and more afraid. So you don't need to think on whatever it is that's bothering you. Phobos means dread or terror. Dread or terror. A person who has a phobia tends to be nervous and dreads facing certain things that they're afraid of. They have a morbid fear of it. For instance, you may have uh, agoraphobia, which is a fear of public places. A lot of people have heard agoraphobia before. Then there's hydrophobia. That's a fear of water. People that can't swim surely have a fear of water. But you can even swim and have a fear of water. There's claustrophobia. You notice they all end with phobia. Well, that's a fear of closed places. A lot of people will walk up flights of stairs because they're afraid of an elevator that's closed in, a closed up place. That's claustrophobia. So you, you don't want those things. And there's a whole lot more phobias. I mean, I had, there was a list of them in this book that I, I saw, like a cardiophobia, which is a fear of heart attacks, uh, eremophobia, which is being alone. I mean, there's just one phobia after another that people have, but they have them. And it's, it's a real thing to them. And so you need to realize that. Now, another Greek word for fear is dahlia. That's D-A-I-L-I-A. -I -I -A. In 2 Timothy, let's go to 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. It says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
So that spirit of fear there means cowardliness or timidity. Cowardliness or timidity. So he hasn't given you that. If you have that spirit on you, you need to get it off of you because he's given you power, love, and a sound mind. Another Greek word for fear is elabia, E-L-A-B-E-I-A, which means caution in obeying him. Caution in obeying him. It can also mean reverence as the fear you would have for God. So many people don't have reverence for God in the church today. We need to reverence him. I'm telling you, we do. He hadn't changed. He's still, he's still the same. He's still the same. And we need to remember that. And we need to uh, have caution in obeying him. We need to reverence him in Jesus' name. Now, aphobos, A-P-H-O-B-O-S, means being without fear. Being without fear, aphobos. And it's used in Luke 1. Turn to Luke 1. Luke 1, verse 74. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Serve him without fear. Now, that uh, where it says serve him without fear it implies being without fear among the Lord's people as his servant. In other words, uh, fear of their opinion of us, fear of what they're saying about us. And we need to recognize that because, you know, sometimes the Lord may tell you to um, start a church, to go into the ministry, to go into uh, this uh, calling or that calling, and but there's a, there's a caution there is that there's a, a fear there that uh, what are these people going to say about that? What are my family going to say about that? Well, believe me, they may have a lot to say about it. But if you can't, <laughs> if you can't stand up under the pressure of your family, then you, you got some learning to do. You got some waiting to do to get in shape because people do talk about you. They really, really do. But I heard someone say that's a good sign when they're talking about you. At least they've heard your name. <laughs> You're doing something that they that they recognize or they've heard of. So we need to we need to watch out for that. Now let's go to Philippians four. Philippians Philippians one, I'm sorry, Philippians one, verse fourteen. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. You speak the word without fear. Whether teaching or on a personal basis, uh, the word will help you. You're more bold to speak the word without fear when you know the word, when you know the man of the word, when you know him. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you confidence to do, to speak what he says to speak. And I'm telling you, it helps a lot of folks. The word will not return void. And you'll find that reading the word, knowing God, will bring peace to your spirit and remove fear. Wow, man, that's good, isn't it? It will remove fear. Now, let's go to uh, Proverbs over in the Old Testament. Proverbs uh, 29. Proverbs um, Proverbs 29, 25. 29, 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. So the fear of man, that's another kind of fear that people have. They have all kinds of fear. Well, the fear of man is one of them. Speak the word without fear. Uh, 29, 25, the fear of, the, of man bringeth a, a, a snare. That snare would be a trap. You can, be, you can have fear of man by the way they look, by the way they talk, by the way they act, the things they do. I remember when, when we first went into the ministry, you know, we, we sang and we went to churches everywhere and we just ministered in song and uh, then happy to have a little 
testimony of a sorts between each song. Wasn't even preaching at the time. He was studying to preach. And uh, people used to say some terrible things because they'd find out we were from Arkansas. And they'd say things like, well, you got on shoes, you know, and, and laugh. And we'd say, yeah, we got on shoes. And I remember a preacher introduced us one time as the Agape Singers from Little Rock, Arkansas. And I believe they have on shoes. I mean, that's the way to get an introduction. But, you know, you get to where the Bible says in Isaiah, you can be hardened to difficulties. So you harden yourself to those difficulties, but keep your heart pliable to his word. Okay, now let's go to um, Isaiah, Isaiah 51. Isaiah, that's the book, next book over. Isaiah 51, 12 and 13. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou should be afraid of a man that shall die and of the son of man which shall be made as of grass? And forgettest the Lord thy maker that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundation of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were all already destroyed and where is the fury of the oppressor where is the fury of the oppressor why are you afraid of man anyway he will die and pass away like grass but Jesus is around to help us forever so don't ever be afraid of people in the name of the Lord God amen amen okay now Isaiah 41, let's go back a few chapters. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Boy, that brings comfort. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Boy, that's a wonderful thought. Anytime you feel dismayed, Anytime you feel out like you can't do it, just read that scripture. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Praise be to God. Now, when you see someone who is afraid, go to them and love them. They need love. Stand in faith for them, knowing who you are in God. Who you are in God. And absolutely, when you do that and you know who you are, then you can help those people. Speak faith words to them. They need to hear your faith. They need to hear faith words to abolish the fear that's coming against them. So you speak faith words and see Jesus between you and the things you fear. That's what you do. You see Jesus in the middle there of the thing you fear. You know, when the disciples were on the water uh, and there was a fierce uh, storm coming, they were very fearful until they saw Jesus walking on the water and their fear left because they thought, well, <laughs> Jesus is here. Jesus is standing between uh, us and this sea, this raging sea, and they were at peace because he was there. So you need to see Jesus in the midst of that uh, storm in the midst of what you're going through, that those circumstances. Now, next is the, the fear of evil. The fear of evil. We live in a day, my goodness, where there's so much evil around us to the left, to the right, before us, and of course, behind us. There's rapes, there's murders, kidnapping, plane crashes, car wrecks, hurricanes, tornadoes, storms. Because we continually hear bad news, we can get hit by a fear of evil. We can get hit by that. So we have to come against it with the word of God, and that word will absolutely uh, set you free. Now let's go to uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 1, verse, uh, Proverbs 1, verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. Mm, that's a wonderful promise. And shall be quiet from fear of evil. 
Man, that's a wonderful thought. Whoso declareth unto me, you could say, it should have hearkeneth unto me. Whoso declares unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. That's our answer. The Bible tells us that man's hearts fail them for fear. Doctors say that many illnesses are caused by fear, and I don't doubt that one bit. I don't doubt it a bit. So Christians, if you don't see Jesus in your situation, you will have fear, and you don't want to have fear. You want to have faith, because faith will see you through it, and you need faith in a wonderful living God. See Jesus. Uh, continue fess- confessing the word, and you'll find your fear will leave. It will absolutely leave. Why? It's because the word is power. The word is Jesus speaking through you. And Satan knows it. He knows when you believe it and when you don't believe it. So you need to get it out of your mouth and run him off. Now, always remember, too, that Jesus is praying for you. You know, I heard someone say one time, I don't have anybody praying for me, but you do. You have Jesus that's praying for you. That's a wonderful, wonderful thought. Now, you know, it says in Luke, in fact, let's turn over there. Luke uh, 22, it's where uh, they were talking about uh, uh, Satan was trying to sift uh, Peter, I believe it was. 22:31. Uh, and, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath de- desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Boy, you can just see him sifting. I know when I read that, I thought, I don't want him sifting me. I mean, you know, he's, he's done enough without sifting me. But that's what he desires to do because he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, verse 32 said, But I have prayed for thee, this is Jesus talking, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now at that time, Peter had not been uh, actually converted, but he, he did later. And I tell you what, his faith did not fail. In fact, he had them uh, crucify him upside down because he didn't feel like he was worthy to be uh, crucified the way Jesus was. So I tell you, he's a wonderful person to know, Jesus is. Now, often fear does not leave overnight. Uh, One day it might not bother you at all, and the next day it will hit you hard. The first step in overcoming fear is to rebuke it the moment it comes. If you entertain it, it will take you over. It It will absolutely absorb into your imagination. And let's, let's go to 2 Corinthians because it tells you what to do with those imaginations. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 5 says, well, let me get over here to this other page. Casting down imaginations, reasonings, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity, you capture it, you bind it up, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise be to God. You cast it down when it comes against you. Absolutely cast it down in the name of Jesus. Then uh, if you begin to speak it, it will get worse and worse. Whatever you're imagining, whatever exalts itself against the knowledge of God, if it's an imagination that you don't cast down, the more you speak it out your mouth, the worse it'll get. So you cast it down in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you what, speak the word. And we need to quote the word. And when you do, and you think on positive things instead of negative, our confidence then will rise up because it's not in our flesh. It's not in our strength, but his strength. And you need to think on that too. You know, uh, Peter told the Lord, I'll not deny thee. I think that was in verse 33. He said, uh, uh, I'll not deny thee. I don't know exactly what what book it was, but it was, uh, he said that. He told Jesus, I'll not deny thee. But he did. He did three times as a matter of fact. Oh, it's in Matthew, the 26th chapter. He did. And, uh, but he had confidence in his flesh at that time. 
not in Jesus or the Word. So we know to uh, where that's concerned, God is moved by our faith. Faith moves God, <laughs> not fear. He can't do anything if you're fearful. So you have to stand up with faith and speak the Word out of your mouth. I know uh, one of the first statements Adam made to God was, I was afraid. You know, when he came to the garden and couldn't find him, when he, when he found him, he said, well, what was wrong? He said, well, I was afraid. He told, he, you know, and he said, well, why did you get afraid? And he told him, well, you know, he ate of the forbidden fruit, and uh, he and Eve both were afraid. And so you just got to know, though, that Jesus forgives you when you make a mistake. Cast down the imagination and absolutely start your day by stating, fear and oppression are far from me. Fear and oppression are far from me. You resist it. And when you resist it, it has to go. Jesus will give you a scripture when the devil attacks you, and he'll minister to you. His word comforts you. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. What a powerful promise. He'll never leave you. He will never forsake you. Praise be to God. And Jesus is not angry if you fear. He just wants to bring you out of fear into faith. So it's not to be, it's not good to be around people who are fearful because it's contagious too. So be around people full of faith and you'll find that your faith will grow. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to always remember that in His presence is fullness of joy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email her at Jeannie Caldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.